In September, South Africans welcome the world as we host the 17th CITES Conference of Parties, the world's biggest wildlife trade conference. As one of the first countries to join CITES, South Africa has always taken an active role in wildlife protection, with the Department of Environmental Affairs spearheading this work in partnership with agencies and stakeholders across the country. South Africa is one of the most mega-diverse countries in the world, and we are committed to empowering communities through conservation and sustainable use of our natural resources. This year, as South Africa welcomes the world on the global environmental stage, we take this opportunity to share the stories of South African communities and the many ways conservation is helping to improve livelihoods across our land. The bearded vulture is a scavenger. The, all scavengers form an essential service to the environment. They clean up the environment, they clean the area of carcasses so that we don't have rotting carcasses, prevent the spread of diseases. These birds feed exclusively on bone, so they're the only animal in the king, animal kingdom that feeds exclusively on bone. We started monitoring the bearded vulture population in 2000 and after a few years of monitoring we realised that the population was a lot smaller than it had been in the past. There's quite a rapid decline and we're looking at the bird being potentially extinct within the next 14 to 15 odd years if we don't take some sort of conservation action now. So there, there has been a huge decline um, and there's a number of reasons for it. The main threats to the bearded vulture are poisoning and it's, it's a secondary poisoning. People aren't targeting the birds specifically. They're targeting, for example, jackal and putting poison baits out for jackal and the birds being scavengers similar to jackal, they will eat the bait that's put out for the jackal. Because vultures are looking down for their food or they're looking up or to the side for predators, they don't expect anything in front of them. So the earth wires on these high-powered um, transmission lines, they hit those and very often break wings or fall out the sky, actually catch fire and then start felt fires. So power lines are probably the, one of the major issues. The um, Muti industry is, is another where, where there's some local beliefs that, that vultures can see into the future. Hence, if you want to know the lotto numbers or the winning football team, if you make a muti of, of vulture parts, you'd be able to then dream what's going to happen, or exams. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's an old belief that we, we're trying to dispel. So we've taken a decision to start a captive breeding program to have an insurance policy in case the population does go extinct that we do have a few individuals in captivity and also the second reason would be to have individuals that we can introduce back into the wild, into the areas where they formerly occurred. The birds lay two eggs and they're only able to raise one chick and basically the second egg is a redundant egg and that's the one that we're taking to hatch in captivity and then raise the chick. The eggs are incubated for about 60 days so we collect them before hatching date and then the birds fledge generally after 100-110 days roughly. The bearded vulture is not the only endangered raptor. The sanctuary is protecting other types of vulture, eagles, falcons and even owls. Belinda Peta works here, taking care of the birds and running education programs for school children to ensure future generations will be aware of the need for conservation. As I work here with the birds, it makes me proud because um, as I start to talk to the school children and the people out there, they like, wow, they want to know more. So now it's like they're getting information from me 
that they when they they didn't know that um the birds they're part of us when we don't have birds around us especially the vultures we're going to have lots of rabies so now they know that they need to look after the birds Conservation leads to innovation. With power lines being a problem for birds, the power utility has come up with some solutions. Well, so one of the major issues that we have with regards to, to birds and electrical infrastructure is that birds actually collide with power lines. They actually fly into the lines. And one of the devices that we use to make the lines more visible for the birds is called these bird spirals or pigtails. And uh, these get put on top of the power lines to make the lines more visible for the birds. We always alternate the colours with these spirals because your background often differs. Sometimes you have the sky as a background and then your, your black spiral will come in a little bit more. And if you have the bush as a background, then, you, then your white spiral will stand in a little bit more. It's a very high risk exercise that they're doing, but it's, it's all, all in the name of conservation of the birds. So the local utility is putting in a lot of time and effort and money into these, um, into these spirals and actually getting a helicopter to come and mark these lines. So there's a lot of risk involved, a lot of money involved, and they're doing this too in order to protect the birds. In the Bearded Vulture Task Force at the moment, we have a really good collaborative group, uh, representatives from all the three provinces of South Africa where the birds occur, the Free State, KwaZulu-Natal and the Eastern Cape. And we're working together with the Lesotho colleagues to try and implement the biodiversity management plan. Uh, the plan has been gazetted in South Africa with a lot of actions in the plan that need to be implemented, but if we implement the actions that have been identified, we'll certainly go a long way to trying to increase the growth rate of the population. Mm -hmm.